came with smiles on our faces, he said. It was America. What could go wrong? Every morning when I wake up, I look at those words on my wall. It helps to remind me why I started this path on attacking basketball trafficking. They remind me of the young person who I was working with, who had dreamt of coming to this country with American hoop dreams on his mind and the same smile on his face, which turned into a nightmare. Now you might be asking, what is basketball trafficking? Basketball trafficking is what I have defined as the exploitative and unregulated migration of international non-citizen youth to the U.S. through and within the interscholastic high school basketball system, which usually begins with the F1 student visa. Now, in the U.S., a more recent, we have seen an exponential growth of prep schools and basketball center academies where young people from around this nation and beyond the borders of this nation migrate to these different places looking for a chance to make it. But many of these places are not regulated. And they can use the F1 student visa, and they do, to bring in international youth to complement some of their teams and their programs. But the F1 student visa, as it currently has been established, does not provide or does not force any provisions for host institutions to pr pr provide food, housing requirements, screening of potential host families. The gate is left wide open. Now, it's also important to know, because we're talking about high school basketball, but the centrality of intercollegiate basketball in this process. Because our intercollegiate basketball, like our interscholastic basketball processes, are inherently connected with the educational system. So to become a student athlete at college, you have to be, first be a student athlete in high school. But there's, there's a good number of regulations that exist at the college level, which is not true at the high school level. So when these young people come, and oftentimes things happen that they're not expecting to happen, there's nothing there to protect them, which was the case of the young person who was living with me. When he wasn't reaching his 18-point game quota, when the school that brought him in told him that he would be living only with two other young people, and it ended up he was living with eight international young people, all of them sharing beds without food, when I and his parents started to ask questions as to why these things were happening, he was kicked out. His visa was removed. His ability to have a stable migratory status in this country was removed, and they blamed it on his grades that he was failing. He was not failing. It wasn't his grades. It was an, it's an academic system tied with our immigration system that is being used for athletic purposes. Now, I can't definitively say that the F-1 student visa was never intended to be used for athletic purposes. But I can say that it does become problematic in the lives of individuals that are deeply intertwined in a multi-billion dollar industry where money is constantly changing hands and dependent on their performance. So just like that young person, when that went wrong, and he was removed, so was his status. And, and this is important, because this, this industry that's, take, that's taking advantage of these kids, is nobody holding, them, holding the individuals accountable. And I also argue that it has a racialized character as well, too. 
Here at Duke University, working with undergraduate students, we've been able to look at NCAA tournament data for men's basketball. And we've been able to identify, looking at this data, when most of these young people that are non-citizens have entered the country. Are they entering the country at the high school level, or are they enter the country in their first year of college? And the data has shown that most young people that are hailing from places like the Global South, where most of these young people are black, particularly from Sub-Saharan Africa or Latin America and the Caribbean, are entering at the high school level. And other young people who are entering at the college level are mostly coming from nations such as Australia, the United Kingdom, Germany, and not always that they're not black because many of these young people are black, but what the data also correlates and shows is that most of these young people coming from the global south are this very similar to young people who have mostly been representative in basketball trafficking mediated meat content in the US. Where the stories that have been found of these young people are mostly coming from the global south as well too. And I think it's important, y'all, that this conversation is being had not only in Duke, but in the state of North Carolina, because you can't talk about basketball in this country and not talk about the state of North Carolina. Now listen, I'm from Texas, and you know we don't concede easily on anything, especially not sports. But I give North Carolina that. You cannot talk about basketball and not know the most recognizable names in the sport are often connected with this state. Now, I must be honest with you, I think the same is true about basketball trafficking. Because one of the first trafficking cases directly tied to basketball also emerges from this state. In 2019, Evelyn Mack of the Evelyn Mack Academy, very near to, Charlotte, um, very near to Charlotte, North Carolina, was prosecuted and charged for harboring aliens and tampering with Federal, federal policies. At least 75 young people from different countries were processed through her academy, and they were all athletes, and they were sold to colleges, excuse me, they were sold to high schools and coaches around the country for about for $1,000 about each. And many of these young people have yet to be recovered. And I imagine they're just like the young person who I knew. Just like the young people who said that quote, we came with smiles on our faces. It was America, what could go wrong? I'm pretty sure they were just like those individuals who thought that their life was going to begin in this place. But now I ask you the question, what does it mean for us? What do we think about the young people that we see on the court? Do we see them and who they are and what they want out of their life? Or do we just see what they're doing for our entertainment? Thank you.